I'm okay. My legs don't hurt at all. No pain, no pain. So sit rep, sit rep. I don't think cycling's enough training. If I'm honest, I'm gonna try a sprint as well. Oh man, I don't know if I've got it in me. I'm keeping my eyes on the floor so I don't trip over, but that's yet to come. This is my Can I Run 55k from Woolwich in South East London to Richmond Park in South West London video. YouTubers usually make videos like I stayed in this Las Vegas hotel and I was shocked or I ran this marathon without training for it and look what happened. Should probably get my bib first, shouldn't I? Oh, there's no quick, is there? Now, I do try not to be this bad. However, this thumbnail and title is not clickbait well it is because it's youtube and if you make realistic thumbnails and titles then no one watches it but this title is far more descriptive than it is dramatic let me quickly get a picture coming in i have not trained for this 55k ultra marathon i have not run anywhere since back in january when i run a trail marathon over the south downs in horrendous mud that video is on my youtube channel so you can check it out after watching this one oh, well, i've just arrived at the start line we're in woolwich arsenal in the middle of south east london on the thames um yeah gotta get my bib now so i'm just going to quickly do that and then we get going as you can tell from my muted and lethargic attitude on the start line, I was not feeling this. I knew I hadn't trained and I couldn't hide the fact that I was probably going to die a slow and painful death of a thousand cuts or 70,000 steps. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm normally bouncing off the walls just before a big event full of anticipation and excitement, but not this one. I'm in a place where I just want to get it done. This the one? Yeah, just me. She's helping me. Kara, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I've got Tracy helping me. Like a special person on the start line who needs help. As I line up to take my obligatory selfie on the start line, get my bib number, or rather wait like a small child while Tracy, acting as my mum or carer, gets my bib for me, and I unenthusiastically introduce the event to you on camera. Oh, wish me luck. Smash it. I'm gonna die. You need one of those hats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did my headband look alright? Yes. Alright, bye. It's gonna get hotter through the day, so we don't want you running out out the Okay, safety briefing. We've got T minus uh, five minutes until we kick off. So, yeah. I just wanna go now. Three, two, one. <laughs> I've said it already, I'll say it again. It's now the end of June. I haven't run since the end of January. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ah, running over cobbles. That marathon that I'm talking about at the end of Jan was five months ago now. 55K from Woolwich to Richmond through South East London. We have some really hilly bits. This is the second time I'm doing it. I'm about to attempt to run 55k through South East London along some very, very enjoyable trails, footpaths, alleyways, but that's not the point here. The point is I haven't run or trained for it. I am not ready for this race. We're about 500 metres into the run. 500 metres of a 55k run. But we're on the Thames. We're on the Thames. And look how pretty this is. So this is where we leave the Thames and we go off it. Now, ambitions for today, famous last words as we're only, what, 2K into this? I'd like to beat my time from last year. So I think I was eight hours and 40 something minutes, I can't remember. Um, I'll put it on screen. And I'm gonna say now, I never trained for today's run. I'm literally doing this with no training. This is my training run. So this is kickstarting my running for the summer. So I'm literally doing this with just Zwift training. So I'm gonna see whether Zwift has given me the fitness to be able to beat my time from last year. However, there is one saving grace to this video. I have raced and trained on Zwift pretty much every single day since Jan. I have raced 
a lot on Zwift. That's at least 30 minutes of intensive HIIT training on Zwift every day for the past five months. Is Zwift enough training to get a 95 kg heavy bloke like me from the start line in Woolwich, 55k across South London to Richmond? Let's find out. Okay, sit rep guys, <laughs> sit rep. I'm gonna be brutally honest. We're not even 5k into this run. On a long run like this, never believe your body for the first 10k and never believe your body for the last 10k. Having said that, I've got a niggle on my right foot. So I've got hard skin on the outside of my foot on the side, but because I haven't run for so long, that's gone a bit soft now. It's not quite as hard as it usually is. It's really sore. It's really sore. This is the problem when you don't train. You know, my fitness, I think, is okay. You know, I know my muscles are going to start aching because I just haven't used them for running. And then I'm starting to get stupid things. I'm going the wrong way. I'm starting to get stupid things like calluses hurting when if I'd been training, I just wouldn't have had that problem. I need to pay attention to where I'm going. Now, I will say this is a spoiler. Zwifting and cycling has massively helped my overall fitness levels. I'm fitter, I'm lighter than I've ever been in my entire life. However, not having trained my leg muscles, specifically my upper thigh muscles, on long runs is starting to affect my running and my cadence. Because my feet have got soft, having had an easy time in comfy cycling shoes recently, they're starting to hurt under the pounding and friction of a long old run. And now, to add insult to injury, it started to rain. Oh my God. This isn't, this isn't great. It's pouring down. And my mic isn't waterproof. I'm gonna turn this off. Oh, sit rep. So it's still raining, it's drizzling now. It's not as heavy. I just had a downpour. This really is a hard challenge that I really need to overcome. Right, it's still raining. However, a whole group of runners have just gone the wrong way. And my watch started buzzing. They've shot off up there. I don't know if you can see them. Now, I will say about this course that even though it is really, really well marked out, the organisers have done a really good job of making sure that you can follow a trail through London, which is crazy. I'm sure that if you are a runner who can concentrate on what you're doing, then you'll be fine. But I'm not, and I won't be. So I downloaded the GPX file to my watch and I followed that. And on the odd few occasions I veered off track, it's normally because I followed other runners who don't have a map on their watch and they're following other runners who have gone off track as well. I don't even know if this is the route. There's no markings. We were like a bunch of lemmings jumping off a cliff. Are you yeah, <laughs> nearly there. <laughs> oh, runner's bants. We're about to enter Ox's Woods. Unlike cycling, I am finishing probably in the bottom half. Steep steps. What's your name? Dan. Dan, nice to meet you Dan, I'm Ryan. Ryan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, that's always nice to meet other like-minded people. We're at 9k, <laughs> that's a random number to update on. I have noticed a marked difference in the fact that I've done no training, no running training. My heart rate is elevated higher than it would be at this point. I'm just very, very hopeful that Zwift is going to carry me through this. Hey, hey, hey. This is steep. I don't know why I'm running it. This is one of the best views. You alright guys? You alright? Just really, really easy. Low heart rate. So I can talk. If I can talk, then I'm keeping the pace down. Have I gone the wrong way? No, it says this way. Have you seen other runners go this way? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Hello. I'm so sorry to bother your vlog. That's right. I wanted to let you know that I'm here because I watched your vlog. Oh, really? Yeah, I watched your That's vlog. That's so good. Thank you. You watched me die last year and you thought oh, you'd give it. Hot, it was hot. No, it was a heat glad. wave. I was glad when I saw the temperature for today. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Hi. What's your name? Claire. Claire, nice to meet you, Claire. I'm Ryan. And Peter. Yeah. Nice good luck today. Thank you, thank you. Hope you smash it. Go on guys, you're faster than me. No, no, no. <laughs> Only downhill. <laughs> oh, trip hazards. 
This is a bit gnarly. Have a word. Checkpoint Charlie. 59. Hiya, mate. Hiya there. Uh, carry on on the road. Yeah, carry on. Is it down here? Yeah. yeah. So I will say I do try not to stop at checkpoints unless one of three things has happened. I'm running low on water, which I need to refill. And to be fair, this is 99% of the reason I only ever stop at checkpoints. Two, because I need food as I'm starting to hit the wall or I need to use the toilet for a number two as I'm a bloke and there's a lot of bushes on route. I'm carrying three litres of water. And if I'm honest, I've drunk two of these, but I've got what is that a litre and a half on my back the rest of the time i try to power through i can get sucked into checkpoints they're like time vortexes you do things in them that are a complete waste of time things that you'd never do in training and by the time you've eaten sweets had a chat taken a selfie had a wee refilled water and tied shoelaces by the way these are all things i watch people do at checkpoints 15 minutes has passed times this over three or four checkpoints and you've lost nearly an hour across the whole route I treat checkpoints like Formula One teams do for emergencies and with a time limit, which I use for the entire run. If I use 15 minutes now at the first checkpoint, then that's 15 minutes I don't have in the last one. The next checkpoint is in 15K. I can do 15K with what I'm carrying. Plus, I like the feeling of carrying everything I need as I attempt to be self-sufficient, well, as self-sufficient as I can be on a long run. The beauty of this route is it's pretty much every terrain, trail, road, footpath, muddy footpath, well-maintained concrete footpaths, and I've got to cross a busy road. There's ribbons like this one across the whole route. Wherever they can tie a ribbon, they pretty much tie a ribbon um, and hope that no one removes them, kids on bikes. So sit rep, how do I feel? I feel really good. I feel really good. I'm not going slow, but I'm not going fast. If I was pushing it too hard at this point, I'd struggle towards the end, I think. My foot is still a bit niggly. I'm a bit annoyed about that. I feel like I want to remove the side of my shoe. So I will say that I know I'm doing a good pace because I'm not really being overtaken. I'm keeping my eyes on the floor so I don't trip over. I'm known for that, but that's yet to come. Oh. Now, as I literally say to camera, that I'm watching the floor for trip hazards, I take a full on Superman leap into the air as I trip over a tree root and I take a really bad tumble. Luckily for me, I do know how to fall. I roll onto my back, avoiding injury. I do like to fall over running. I mean, to be fair, I like to fall over cycling as well, but I blame the cleats for that. I've got no excuse for falling over running other than the fact I just wasn't looking where I was going, even though I'm literally saying I'm looking where I'm going. Oh my God. I did it again, every time. Right. Do you want to be on the vlog? I want to be on the vlog, I want to be on the vlog. <laughs> I feel like a... <laughs> Woo! Nice to meet you guys. So I just had a couple of subscribers <laughs> run up behind me as I, after I fell over. Of course I fell over in front of them. Always great when that happens. Yeah, I feel all right. I'm a bit annoyed. I tripped over again. Tree roots every time. This fall was really annoying. I had a really good pace going. I was starting to feel really good. I was settling into the run and this fall knocked my concentration. It knocked my confidence. I wasn't zen with the run anymore. I was now really annoyed and really discombobulated. My pace now fell off a cliff for the next few K. Yeah, that falls annoyed me. It's completely avoidable. And I'm gonna get loads of comments now. Oh, don't bother filming it. Well, I enjoy filming it. The same hip, I landed on the same hip that I landed on on Sunday at the London to Brighton bike ride. Shit. Oh, that's twice now, three times, four times. If you include my home to Clacton falls. Falling off the bike again. That's twice now. Fourth times I've fallen on the same spot on my hip. Must be made of titanium. Okay, running through paths like this, you wouldn't know. I was in central London. I mean, you would when you come across the occasional burnt out bin. Hiya. Hey, that'll get tiring after a while. <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> the running gets tiring after a while. Not bad. Yeah. There's a park run over there. <laughs> I might go and join it and just finish. Cross a, that's the finish line, right? Just cross that. 
Yeah, 55k. Yeah. How far are we on, mate? Uh, 20. Oh, well done. I love park runs. Hey, hey, hey. Guys, this is so hilly, this route. I'm going to say that now. I'm getting overtaken as well, which isn't doing a lot for my morale. Was that a mushroom? <laughs> Thank you. Did you do a video this last year? Yeah. I watched it yesterday. Oh. Really helpful. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Nice to meet you. Good. Have a good one. And you, good luck. That's 30k guys, 30k. I'm okay. My legs don't hurt at all. No pain. No pain. Okay, we're running through the park. Yeah, I remember this from last year. It's up here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's up here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, we're in Crystal Palace Park. I remember this being the start of the big old hill. This is why I powered up it and regretted it afterwards. So I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to take this easy, nice and steady, and uh, hopefully leave something for the finish. This course is a really, really hilly course, and most of it is through Crystal Palace. GoPro doesn't do it justice. I don't even know why I filmed the inclines. The good news is that this is just before the halfway checkpoint. So even if you do get destroyed on the climbs, you've got the checkpoint that you can recover in. Now I am gonna add this into the video. I don't know if the event organizers watch YouTube videos of their events, probably not. I think I made a point of it in my last video last year when I ran this exact same event. I try really hard not to include anything that could be considered negative in my videos unless it's part of the experience, it's part of the journey of the race. I try not to rely on aid stations, I've mentioned that already, but there are two things you can't avoid having to stop for on long runs in the summer, and that's water refills, and probably if you're drinking enough, a toilet break, but you could probably argue if you're running through London you can use McDonald's and KFC's to stop for a wee in they're about all they're good for McDonald's and KFC's but water is a must at aid stations so when I do stop at this checkpoint needing to refill my water I really don't want to have to stop in a big queue to wait for water and then be under pressure to refill two water bottles with one hand because I'm holding that tops in the other hand and I'm trying to turn the tap on it's gonna be a pain would you mind holding that for a second for me no, no, that's fine. thanks i forgot to take the lid off and then also have to refill my water bladder in my backpack even this woman behind me had had enough of how long i was taking to refill just two bottles and pushed in to refill her cup it was crazy it was a melee i left refilling the bladder at this aid station this halfway checkpoint as i didn't want to be the one making everyone behind me wait for me as i refilled a copy amount of water what i would say to organizers buy two or three more jerry cans and fill them with water they're nine quid in camping shops make an effort to reduce the queue waiting time for runners who don't want to seize up because they've stopped too long at a checkpoint this is wasted time this is what i mean about getting sucked into checkpoints so i'm just leaving the pit stop now so the pit stop is full of people leaving for the next half so you've got people arriving that are doing the full 55k and then you've got people starting their 25k that are only doing half. It feels like they need more toilets. However, they definitely, definitely need more water canisters. So last year, we had to queue up for a water canister to refill our water. Priority one, refill water. Uh, that was an ordeal in itself because there was a queue for the water, for the one water fountain. They had one water canister that was just literally being drained. However, this year it's the same again. Yeah, chaos, just come on, ultra London put another water canister out maybe two i hate adding stuff like this in as events like this are great organizers and volunteers put a lot of effort into making it a great event and if companies stopped putting them on i'd miss them but this is now the second year running that this queue for water has been too long so it's in the video so as i walk up this hill i'm having a saurian bar this is apple flavor i always like the idea that i'm hungry because it means I'm not dehydrated. At this point in the run, with less than 20k left to go, some runners, some faster runners that pushed through the first half of this run had now slowed to a jog or even a walk, and I was passing loads of people. This was a big morale boost. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought the lights had changed then. 
my slower zone three run throughout the whole race so far was now starting to pay off. I was able to push a bit more because I knew I was coming to the end. Passing runners who had got their pacing strategy either wrong. I'm actually overtaking people. Or had simply hit the wall knowing that I was still able to push it was a great feeling. <laughs> Now, I'm hardly Elliot Kipchoge at this point, far from it, but knowing I hadn't walked and was now moving up a gear showed me how far I'd come on long endurance runs like this. Okay, guys, we have got 15K left, three park runs, and I'm just coming up to marathon distance, and I've still got 14K left to go. I haven't got much of a sit rep. I took my camera, uh, I took the microphone off because it started raining. We've just entered Wimbledon Common and I can see at the checkpoint. Two park runs, guys. Two park runs. Oh my God. I don't think he's running with us. I hope not going at that pace. He's smashing it if he is. won't make you endure any more poor audio quality. You can really see why I use this mic attached to my head. Entering Richmond Park on this route is very special. It marks the beginning of the end of the best part of the run. It's the most scenic and enjoyable part of the run. And it's also really close to the finish line. So you can start to enjoy the fact that you're almost finished. Guys, oh, guys, guys, guys. So sit rep, sit rep. I don't think cycling's enough training, if I'm honest. To be able to smash this out, but having said that, having said that, I would like to have had some running training under my belt. But having said that, I'm smashing last year's time. Can't be all bad. Thank you, Zwift. Update on distance 5k. I'm whispering because there's people near me, and it's embarrassing because they're all serious and going for it and head down and Oakley glasses and power drinks. I'm all red headband and GoPros. 5k, man. 5k. Look, look. Look, oh my God, guys. Oh. Just a park run, just a park run. <laughs> 500 meters, that's all we've got left. I'm gonna try a sprint as well. Oh man, I don't know if I've got it in me. Always sprint for a finish line. So as I attempt a lukewarm sprint cross the finish line and take my medal from the world's most reluctant Gen Z medal giver. Thank you very much. God. Have you had enough of giving these out now? Oh, I've only just started. Oh. <laughs> You've got to love British reluctance. So last year with training for it, I ran this event in eight hours and 42 minutes. This year, having only raced on Zwift, I ran it in eight hours, and 16 minutes. I only managed to shave 26 minutes off my time from last year, but I did it by intentionally running slow, intentionally running slow. I had no real choice as I hadn't trained for it, but I'm gonna end this video on a high by saying that I had a strategy, I had a strategy. Run slow on purpose and smash 26 minutes off my ultra London 55K PB. Moral of this story, don't train for endurance ultra runs using only an indoor bike trainer. Thanks for watching. I'm sitting on the grass with a packet of crisps, uh, it's ready salted, and a bowl of the only vegan sweets they do, which are Skittles. I'm gonna eat them. I don't know the time, so what, well, the time, according to my watch, I think I beat last year. I think I beat last year. Fingers crossed, because I'm a bit of a brain fog at the moment. I'm pretty exhausted, so yeah, smashed it. I'm really pleased with that. <laughs>